It is another Thursday night at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So you know what that means, Kelly? Yes. It means it's self-publishing question and answer time. So you're going to want to make sure that you stay tuned. Welcome to Self-Publishing with Dale. And Kelly. And if you've come here, you probably came here to learn a little bit more about publishing books that sell and building an unstoppable brand. And of course, this is the live broadcast that we come every Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Mostly every Thursday. Mostly every Thursdays. We're going to circle back around to that in just a minute here because next week there's going to be a little bit of a oh, skip week because of the holidays. The holidays. So we're going to be hanging out today and we're going to talk a little bit about some of the relevant news in self-publishing. And then we're going to cover some questions. How are you feeling today? I feel okay. Good? Yeah. Yeah. Kelly went out for a walk today. Freezing freaking cold. The real feel was 20. Real feel was 20. Of course, but you know, I'm yeah, compared to probably up there north of us there in Canada, that probably is nothing. What's shaking, everybody? Who's in the house? I know John Wass is in there. He's all grumping to me like I didn't answer his, his stuff. Uh, give us a minute, by the way. Those of you watching replay, give me one minute. We do this every week. Mojo, what's going on? Mark Brownless, Walter Weyburn, thank you for all your support with both of our channels. Uh, John Wasser, uh, Stephen Martin, what's going on? Kim here, hi. Uh, Patty Hevely, Keith Wheeler, and oh, anyone I Keith missed. Wheeler! What's up? It's good to see y'all in here. Keith Wheeler! Keith, don't, don't be Keith Wheeler today. I don't know why my button decided it was just going to go ahead and do that. Well, all right, let's go ahead and get into the relevant news. Uh, really, there wasn't too much going on this past week. Nope. But what did go on was kind of a hot topic. So in any event, uh, first of all, before we get into things, we discussed this this past week, Create Space is no longer accepting any more uploads. Okay, no new accounts, no uploads. Like literally, if you're hanging on, clinging <coughs> to your Create Space account, anticipate the end is nigh. It is here. So uh, just just be be aware. Uh, I want to give everybody a little bit of a warning, not to make you get you into a panic. And this is just me sharing information as usual. I do have a CD that I had produced through Create Space of music, and Media on Demand was the platform to send all the DVDs and CDs to. And they actually started migrating before the whole merge of Create Space with KDP Print. So I knew it was coming along. Uh, issue is, I didn't shift it over and they forcibly moved it. And now I try to click on the title, it won't take me to the title and my Create Space dash. And then I go over into my Media On Demand account. It's not there, even though in the Create Space account it says it's been sent over to my Media On Demand. So it's out in limbo. Now who's buying the CD? Absolutely nobody. Like literally it was something I just tried for the heck of it. Uh, but nonetheless, I just want to kind of give you a heads up warning that, you know, I hope this isn't what the direction they're going to be heading when it comes to the forcible movement of those that haven't moved from Create Space to KDP yet. Just so you know. All right, moving on. Kelly, you got this one. Oh boy, pop sockets. Where did I go live yesterday? <laughs> I did my live at 10 a.m. yesterday and pop sockets were unavailable. And there was an article about um, pop sockets and Amazon not getting along. But turns out it was just a glitch. And a few hours later, they started appearing again. So that's what the thing was. But the takeaway was. Don't panic, you know, in the future and diversify. If you are only relying on one platform on Amazon, whether it's KDP, Merch, FBA, shame, shame. I know it's tough on newbies because you got to get started, yeah. but just be aware that it's really, really scary only relying on one source of am income from Amazon because things like that can happen. You know, pop sockets unavailable for a certain period of time. If you're only relying on pop sockets, your income might have taken a hit yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thankfully, I've got two in all of my uh, account. I've got a, the 1K tier, and uh, didn't affect me. I was like, huh. Well. I mean, I don't think I sold a pop yeah. socket yesterday. I still sold, I think, 20 shirts, yeah. but. 
Yeah, and, and the, the reason why I want to share this, and a lot of people are probably like, okay, what does pop sockets have to do with the, the indie authors and publishing and such? And the thing is, I want everybody to kind of pay attention to the fact that you must diversify your business. If you just rely on just one avenue for your income, you're, you're, you're building a house of cards and it will get knocked over at some point or another. Uh, this is something I have been really delving into deeply in the forthcoming book I've been working on uh, about diversifying your business and you have to diversify. So if you are going all in on pop sockets and just on merch by Amazon, I, I challenge you that you know you take a step back instead of going 100% on one thing, maybe focus 80% on it and then take another 20% and focus on other areas and ways that you can build your business outward and you can really get it to where you're safeguarding yourself from instances like this. Because you, could you imagine someone who's 100% relying on pop socket income if this hadn't cleared up the way it was? Oh, I know a few different people who had over a thousand pop sockets. I mean, mm -hmm. they don't rely on merch for all their income, but I'm back to only doing max of five products a day. I'm like, no, there's other ways to make money. Yeah. That's just gonna be maintained. Yeah, so. All right, moving forward here. And uh, by the way, keep loading us up with the questions and comments. Uh, we are paying attention. I promise you, we're just gonna burn through some of this stuff. Publish Drive just announced today, which by the way, big shout out to my boy, Adam Woods, the author success coach from Publish Drive. We actually spoke for about an hour today. The guy's awesome. Just a, a ball of energy, a fantastic guy to have around. I can't say enough good things about them, but Publish Drive actually just announced their uh, deal with Biblioteca. Uh, some of you may be aware of, they're a library distribution platform and essentially you are paid per uh, lend. And they broke it down in the, the email as far as how does that work for royalty share and such like that. What I would recommend is just go into the FAQ section on Publish Drive. I'm sure they probably updated or are going to be updating it relatively soon. Uh, good news is since they've got Biblioteca, that means that they are now kind of neck and neck with draft to digital and smash words when it comes to equal footing as far as the distribution and their reach. So that's a good one. Kudos, uh, Publish Drive. Stay tuned to this channel. Uh, I'm really, I've been nagging them and I keep asking them and I'm like, what do you guys got coming? What's happening? What's happening? They just said this. Stay tuned. That's literally it. They just <clears throat> will let you know. So, uh, all right. Reminder, Kelly, you got this one? No. Oh, was that about draft to digital? Reminder about this? Oh, um, for draft to digital, if you want your ebook to be delivered by Christmas, you need to have it or available for purchase or delivered something. Yeah. Regardless, the important date is tomorrow. Yeah. You gotta get it in it tomorrow for some significance by Christmas. So yeah, uh, so uh, this is gonna work across the board here, folks. If you're new to this business in the holiday season, AKA quarter four or Q4, um, you need to be aware that a lot of people are trying to get their stuff in and a lot of orders are being fulfilled. So you have to kind of give some of these online distribution platforms a little leniency because they're having to take on a little more work than they're used to doing. So if you haven't uploaded your book and you want it out and selling by the holiday uh, being in time for uh, Christmas, you got to get the stuff up now, like yesterday. So uh, am I saying you should stop working at all? And it, no, not at all, but just be prepared. There's going to be some delays. All right, place your bets. Kelly, you ready to bet? You like betting. She wanted to go to the casino the other day, folks. Should we go to the casino? Have we earned it? Place your bets. Here we go. The KDP Global Select Fund. Oh my goodness. We're gonna be hearing about it here pretty soon. What's gonna be the November one? October's was $23.5 million. It was up by, I think, 0.5, a half a million dollars. It moved up. It was marginal raise. Do you think it'll go up a bit more? Or do you think it'll maintain? I wonder what you think. So what is the KDP Global Select Fund of November 2018? We're gonna have that answer in our next live because no, uh, we'll hear November's earnings by December 15th. So mm -hmm. what's your guess? Um, it's gonna go up. I'm gonna say 25 million. I'm just gonna go round on this one so that way I don't forget. 
23.8, and I will forget. 23.8. Someone please remember for Kelly. Uh, maybe, you know, just snip this so that way she can remember this. Uh, good evening to you too, Rob Hutchings. I just seen you pop on in there. So load us up with them questions. Before we do address your questions inside the chat, and definitely appreciate it. And if you're new here, make sure that you put the hashtag new. So let us know that you're here. And this is your first time. Viewer question. Kelly's got a viewer question for us today. Oh, yes. Someone um, asked me on one of my YouTube videos. Over on my channel, I have a video on how to make a template for a book cover. And someone wanted to know, they wanted me to make a tutorial on Photoshop, how to use that template to make a book cover. And I don't know if this person's listening, but if mm -hmm. you, Photoshop is a big beast. So if you yes. want, <laughs> you know, any short tutorial to make a, you know, book cover. I'm sorry, I don't think the book cover is going to be pretty with a 20 minute tutorial. So, um, right. yeah, there, there's so much more um, with graphic design that's a lot more in depth. I would just recommend that if you're, you're new to using any graphic design tools, don't don't try to, to build this on sweat equity. You're gonna spend hours upon hours upon hours upon hours upon hours before you can even get a tenuous grasp on it. Uh, so get some good Udemy courses. Um, I've yeah. got a couple of like crash courses on how to make a paperback cover for Create Space, which it's gonna be of course relevant to KDP now. Uh, but you know, it's gonna take some time. So look up some Udemy courses, uh, get some Photoshop courses. Um, Definitely a course. Udemy mm -hmm. actually has a free option. If yeah. you do search it, you can check off free. So you only get to see the free courses. And then mm -hmm. you had the one, was it DIY book covers? Yeah, no, uh, yes, yes. Uh, Derek Murphy actually has a free uh, course that you can take a look at. And by the way, I literally never hear from Derek. Derek, what gives, buddy? Uh, it's not on Photoshop, but it's a it's a free course. Yeah, it's through uh, he uh, Derek Murphy. Uh, he's actually got his own channel here on YouTube. Uh, very successful here. Another indie author. He actually produces covers through Microsoft Word. So those of you that are using Microsoft Word and have you know kind of a tenuous grasp on things, he actually has a full tutorial on how to do it. He shows how to blend and how to do masks and how to, you know, it's really kind of cool that he's able to do so much with Microsoft Word and it's 100% free. And I'll tell you, I, I signed up for it. I never hear from Derek, ever. So it's almost like you go in there, he literally, there's, there's no upsell uh, unless he's changed something recently. Uh, I really like it, but I think it's DIYbookcovers.com, it might be. So just Google that up, DIY book covers, and you might be able to find it. I've actually uh, promoted that at one point or another. So if you're looking for that, Easy way out. Just be prepared. Your, your, your cover's probably going to look bowling shoe ugly. So just, I always, almost always say, yeah, it's fine. Try to tweak that skill in the meantime. Hire out. Right? Yeah. I mean, I also think maybe if you only do one or two books a year, just hire it out. Should you really even learn a skill if you only do it once or twice a year? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Precisely. Precisely. Yes. Let's see. What else? Let me scroll. All right. So we got some questions from the viewers and this is subscriber hangout. It's great oh, to see everybody hanging. By the way, we already had our tacos again. before we started. Uh, Walter Weyburn says he misses pronoun. I do too. Yeah, it's, that was kind of nice. It's been nice. a year since they had uh, announced they had uh, closed their doors, pronoun publishing. My Google Play earnings have not been anything near what pronoun had. I, I do have to admit, yeah, my Google Play earnings dropped um, from that transition, but I mean, it really wasn't all that much, but Publish Drive picked up where they, they left off. You went directly into Google Play, whereas I just mm -hmm. said, screw it, I'll go on to Publish Drive, and I've been pretty happy with the company. They, they've been really nice, and I, I noticed real briefly that Mojo had mentioned um, she just kind of debating over whether to go from draft to digital over to Publish Drive. Uh, you know, here's the thing is, I'm not gonna say anything disparaging about either one of the companies. I, it's almost like trying to pick your favorite child. You're not gonna be able to pick your favorite child, at least not publicly, and without you know, losing a little bit of face. Uh, I would say this is if you're on draft to digital and you're happy with it, then, then stay with it. Uh, so likewise, if it was published drive, I'd say the same thing back in the other direction. If you're happy with it, stay with it. I'm not trying to convince anybody to give themselves more work. And I'm not trying to give you like, hey, you got permission, go ahead, move from this platform to that one. No, that's just, that's wasting your time. If you're seeing some great results from Draft to Digital, stay there. If you're seeing great results from Publish Drive, stay there. And I would say it would be a mess 
having everything unpublished and draft to digital and then oh. move it over to Publish Drive and re-upload it to the same platform. Yep. Unless you use Publish Drive for some of the weird ones, but I don't know, I don't do Publish Drive, but for you, do the weird ones even make you money? Google Play is pretty much my, my drawing um, uh, money. I, I don't recall ever seeing anything selling outside of Google Play on my Publish Drive account. Now, uh, to, to be noted though, I haven't taken much time and energy into really working on the metadata, updating the covers. It's something I'm slowly but surely going through. Actually, I've been getting some help from uh, Marco Motino. Folks, uh, friends of the channel, also good friends of us, Marco and Natasha, if you guys haven't had the opportunity, make sure you check out the Motinos on YouTube. But at any rate, Marco actually has a service called Urban Writers, and I picked up a cover and I, I shot this out in the email today, and I'm really, really happy with the cover. I will be actually showing that cover in an unboxing video here pretty soon because I actually had it made into a hardback book through, drum roll please, lulu.com. So oh, we're gonna, gonna get that. So everyone who came in after we said hello, knitting mommy, and if I miss anyone, I apologize. I don't remember who I shouted out at the beginning. Um, Ronnie Roberts, live great. Um, Tiana Marie, two blue eyes, Marcus Mangold, um, Hawkins, uh, Knight Templar, Boom Blogger, Walker Publications, Gail Becker. Um, let's see. Popping tonight. Glad to see everybody coming over to hang out with us. This is really kind of cool. I like this. This is chill. I feel less stressed on these lives. Like I used to like freak out. Believe it or not, folks, I used to freak out. Yes. Now it I'm was not like, fun. Yeah. Um, Walker Publications, do we still have access to their templates? I assume meaning Create Space. I I don't know. I don't have any books on Create Space, so I, I don't know if we you can edit them. Yeah. I would say just try and see what happens. Yeah, g give it a shot. Uh, you know, at this point, you'll probably know better than us. And if anybody's watching this on the replay, if you can chime in on that, let us know. Have you been able to access Create Space's cover creator? Um, Sam Ducharme, I'm sorry if I mispronounce your last name. I just released my book on Amazon and I was wondering, does your book get pushed closer to the first page depending on hashtag sold or reviews only? Hmm. First of all, banana sticker for you for, for releasing your book. Congrats. It's no easy feat, especially if this is your first one. Uh, here's the thing is, to get first page placement, there's, it's, it's, it's a much more difficult an elaborate process than some people would make out. They believe that, oh, well, if I get a certain amount of keywords within my book, I'm gonna get first page placement. But it's so much more. Amazon's algorithm, AKA A9, is based, how it serves the customers is based on relevancy. Relevancy is weighed on so many factors, including impressions to clicks to sales, uh, to engagement such as reviews, uh, to, you know, I think I said keywords already, um, you know, other books within its particular niche where it's going to be placed at and the relevancies, it, it just, it, it varies so much. So I've had some people that are like, I was on first page just five minutes ago and now it's gone. What happened? Well, you know, your book became not as relevant at that particular moment. It's, it's not something you should freak out over. I would just recommend that if you're looking at being in this business long term, always anticipate that you're gonna have some peaks and valleys. This, it's like this on YouTube. For instance, like right now, Kelly and I are seeing kind of a valley. Uh, we're not seeing as many viewers. This happens. There's probably gonna come a big boom. We're gonna see a big upward growth. This works like this across all businesses. It's not always sunshine and rainbows mm -hmm. here, folks. So you're not gonna always get first page placement. There are those unicorns of the business, okay? There are those that are like the Mark Dawson's that completely destroy it, that they'll, they'll get first page placement every single time. But the vast majority of us are gonna have to claw and scrape and get our way into that first page placement. So um, I would just recommend, don't sweat the first page placement stuff. What I would recommend is focus on your marketing and promotion strategy. If you really, really, really wanna get first page placement, uh, Amazon advertising. I mean, it's kind of a, the, the cheat way of getting in there, but you know, um, impressions don't cost a dime over on Amazon advertising, uh, clicks do, but if you can get yourself up in there, you just greatly increased it. Um, I think he said something about impressions on there at some point. Um, Am I jumping too ahead too soon? You're jumping too okay. soon. 
Um, Betty Abrantes, I'm quite new with KDP. Should I choose KDP Select? If you're a bit new, uh, go ahead. You, you, you answered this one first. No, you. Oh, you want me to answer it? I was just breathing. Oh, okay. Uh, no, I just thought you would just go ahead instead of me talking all the time. Newbies, I always recommend uh, go KDP Select. Don't, don't overcomplicate the process of going to, say, draft a digital, publish, drive, or anything else like that. Just go to Amazon KDP Select to get your feet wet, to really understand the process and start to comprehend what works and what doesn't work. And here's the thing is KDP Select program, it kind of gives you the unfair advantage. So if somebody checks out your book in the store, that is registers as kind of like the same value as a sale does. Um, I don't know if it's the precise ratio of it, but anyway, every time someone checks out your book and flips through your pages, it influences your bestseller ranking. So you can literally get into the top of the bestseller charts without having a single sale and all through the you know the KDP Select program if somebody's just checking it out and flipping through it. So just understand this that I always recommend to newbies, start with KDP Select for the first 90 days. If you find out in the first 90 days, it's like this ain't working, like your rank isn't going anywhere, you can always opt out and then go ahead and publish wide. But for now, I'd say stick with your first three to six months on, on there. I do this for all of my books every single one of them. I almost always just, it gives me some breathing time. So when I, I launch a book, I, I put it on up there, I see if it does well on KDP Select, because if it does well, I won't worry about doing all the extra work of going and publishing wide. Uh, if it does garbage, I just bought myself at least three months time that I can get it formatted, I can go through and do some additional edits and adjustments before I go to other platforms like a published drive, draft a digital, smash words, et cetera, et cetera. George, Stefan, what percentage of impressions should you expect to turn into clicks and what percentage of those clicks do you expect to convert into sales? Okay, I know Kelly's like, she's, she's like, <laughs> look, that was the one I saw. Uh, so great question, George. Uh, Marco covers this quite a bit over in the interviews that actually is on this channel. So if you were to go to playlists in this channel um, and look up Amazon marketing services or it could be Amazon advertising or uh, Amazon advertising for books with Marco Motino, he covers this quite a bit. And I'm sorry, correct me if I'm wrong, Marco, if you happen to be showing up, I highly doubt you are. Guys, poor guy's busy. Um, I think it was like a thousand impressions per click. You know, that's kind of a good metric now that's not to say that's going to be figuring out cost per click i mean so if cost per click is a bit higher you know then that's going to change the whole scenario for me generally if i can get a thousand to one click i'm pretty happy if i can see about few clicks and a conversion to a sale i'm even happier but this is just generic advice and unfortunately it's going to change from one book ad to the next uh, Don Elborn, thank you so much for stopping by. Hashtag new. Hashtag new. Big thumbs up. You get yourself a banana uh, sticker. CB Interview Services. Hello. What's going on? Kathy Menken, how have you been? What up? Um, Kathy Menken. Let's see. Well, let me scroll down. What's, what's going on with Twitch? Are you still on hiatus or are you still going to do Twitch in the new year? Uh, I will be doing Twitch in the new year, but it's just going to be on indefinite hold right now. Unfortunately, I'm just going to be transparent with you folks that um, I can show up here on YouTube. And so, for instance, we've got about 41 viewers. I show up to Twitch. I'll have three. Um, Mojo, uh, Kevin McGuire, Keith Wheeler usually shows up and Kathy will pop in every now and then. Uh, it's just just un too unpredictable right now for me. And even if I'm spending, say, an hour over on Twitch, um, that's an hour of time that I can leverage to other things or come over here into YouTube. So uh, I'm going back to Twitch. I just need to kind of reassess my game plan and figure out why I'm on the platform because right now I was just kind of being a bull in a china shop and it's just not accomplishing much. Um, I missed Kim's question earlier. Thinking of diving into Amazon Merch in 2019, it says oh. I have to apply. How hard is it to be accepted? I really don't know. Um, <laughs> Because back when I started in the beginning, you didn't need to be um, accepted. You just got in. Mm -hmm. I've heard that 
you know if you got in within a few days now, but I don't really know any tips. There's really no pattern from what I've seen. I've seen graphic designers get rejected and people who don't know much graphic design get accepted. So I would just answer the questions honestly and I don't even know what questions they ask now, but just yeah. treat it like a job application. Give it so. a shot. Yeah, give it a shot. The same thing kind of goes with the Amazon Associates program. Um, I, I, if there's anything I would recommend that's going to be a little bit different for Amazon Associates is make sure that you have a website set up. And I'm not referring to some free blogger website or anything else like that. Try to find something that you can attach a domain name to it and have some type of hosting service. Now, can you get away with using a blogger one and your own domain on top? Absolutely, you could. Yeah. Um, but it's going to look a little bit more professional. You're going to want to have at least six to 12 different posts or pages within your website before you apply to Amazon Associates. Now, that's a completely different application process, uh, but I just thought I would just kind of chime in there. You know, in any event, there, there's that. So um, I think I've seen a couple people just pop in. By the way, Ernest, I, I noticed you. Thank you very much. I appreciate you always popping in here and hanging out with us. Uh, if I if we don't know if we don't notice you right away, it's not that we're ignoring you. We promise you. There's just a lot of people that we're trying to keep up with. If you could just see what we're looking at here right now, it's 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 tough to keep up. Short Fortnite clips. What's happening there? It's good to see you joining us. Have you tried out audiobooks? What was your results and how do January sales compare to December? Okay, uh, I've actually been doing audiobooks for a long time now. Actually. Um, Am I smashing it just like the Mickelson twins? Not by any stretch, but they have actually leveled up my understanding of audiobooks. And it's been my experience, like much anything, when you go into quarter four and just a little bit into the beginning of Q1, quarter one, January, the, the sales are gonna be a little bit more inflated than they normally are. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, your, your audiobooks are gonna definitely be, a, you're gonna get a lot more. I would recommend if you haven't already processed your audiobook, you have something on there, it, you better get it on there now because you're going to probably miss that window of opportunity because as some of you might be aware, audiobook creation exchange takes a little longer to go through and vet out some of the audio content. I've had some stuff flipped within a couple days and I, some of them have taken upwards of like three or four weeks depending on the file length. Jan Marie Kelly, what's shaking? There's a banana sticker for you. Techno Dad, what's going on? Triple banana sticker for Techno Dad. Chana, you're so awesome. Um, I'll just have to add on what Dale said was um, the income. January is still higher, but it's going to be lower than December. And then once you get mm -hmm. to February, it's almost to... back to reality. Yeah. Unless you're in a niche that is like good for Valentine's Day mm -hmm. or stuff like that but still you know november december january is like <laughs> right uh so uh, historically speaking at least in in this household uh it, as i mentioned before with ebb and flow um you know there is some ebb and flow every year there's some predictability to where we're going to see less sales than normally do um, but not so much that it puts us in danger, but typically in the late summer months is when we start to see a little bit, a bit more of a drop than usual. And it's kind of nice because as soon as October rolls around is when quarter four starts out, holiday season, people start to, the, the wheels start to get greased and we start to see a bit more sales. Lord knows I, I'm loving, you know, seeing that dashboard in KDP. I'm like, yeah, makes Hel me feel good. Hello, cover design with Emily. Good to see you in the house. Um, let's see what is up. Um, Goncalo, hashtag new. Nice to hear you live. Regards from Spain. It's great to see you here. I was going to say something in Spanish, but I knew I would mess it up. So, hola. Uh, Don Elborn has a good tip. If you're still here, Kim, he knew nothing and no experience, but was accepted in merch within a few days. And this was about two nice. months ago. Uh, Don, make sure you at least upload something. You can do it! I'm sure you might be excited and already have uploaded something, but I think last time I knew you had to upload at least one design and have your bank information filled out within it's either 90 or 120 days or your account went ch -ch -ch. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you can do it! it! Yeah. Listen to Rob Schneider, just do it. <laughs> Um, I think you said hello to Jan Marie, but what's up, Jan Marie? Thanks for stopping by. Short Fortnite clips wants a banana sticker. A banana sticker. You get a small banana sticker. I'm. 
<laughs> do you have a video on your to-do list about branding? For me? Um, gosh, branding is so, so wide and so, so big. Uh, I'll tell you that actually it is on my to-do list, but my to-do list is so stinking deep. Um, Anticipate it should, should come sooner than later. It is, uh, for those of you that actually are enrolled in the DIY publishing course, I had a lot of new students, by the way. Welcome, new students of DIY publishing course. If we have not connected, please let's do that. Uh, a lot of the people came in on the Black Friday, Cyber Monday deal. So awesome to have you back on, on board. I've got big news coming out later this month about the DIY publishing course. It will be available to the public and available to most everybody based on their budgets. So just want to let you know that. And in that course, oddly enough, there's a good reason why I wanted to bring this up. I do cover branding. I do cover that and I cover pretty much on the granular level. Don Elborn is already on the tier 100, only two months in March. That is awesome. And I also wanted to mention, um, Gail Becker mentioned she got in only a couple days because she's an educator. So that's what made me think, Kim, make sure you mention your YouTube channel mm -hmm. and you might want to say you want to provide merch for your audience. So just, just an idea that popped in my head. Okay, I'm seeing if I can do this command here, folks. It's, if it seems weird, um, nope, that's not it. How about shirt? Ah, there it is. All right, it worked. See, John, it worked! Exclamation point, John, during live broadcasts. You guys can get a hold. You guys have seen me wear the shirt before. Right drunk, edit sober. You can grab, you can get your hands on one of those shirts right there by checking it out. Uh, let's hang on a second. Let's, let's do exclamation point, Kelly. Come on now. I know I've got a command for it. How do you know what tier you're on in merch? Uh, oh, look, it popped up. Hooray! Uh, good question, Kelly. Uh, log in and the first thing you see, it'll show you. If you have, yeah. if you don't have any pretty extensions, it's going to be on the first page when you log in at the very top. It'll mm -hmm. say something like you can still up, you have X uploads remaining for yeah. the day. And then underneath that in smaller print, you have, you know, X number of shirts uploaded and you're allotted whatever. Yeah, it doesn't so, ever say tier, by the way. Tier mm -hmm. is kind of insider uh, term and lingo. Uh, so you're just gonna see the number of shirts that you're able to do total. Techno Dad, your video quality is awesome. Gotta get, love seeing you guys. Love seeing you too, Thank Channel. you for stopping by. It's always great seeing you, man. Always. Yeah, Dale, working on my second book. I will keep you posted. Yeah, Ernest, you keep at it, man. You've uh, you've had a, a stellar year. Um, I know uh, Ernest has been keeping us updated on some of his progress. And by the way, always love to hear uh, some of your progress, folks. If you have some successes and sometimes your setbacks as well. It's not you know it's not always easy, folks. You, we all struggle in some capacity. So that's why it's great when some people can kind of share. Hey, this is what I've been successful at doing. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. 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 So I, I love seeing that inside the Facebook group. I want to hang on a second. Do I have hashtag? Do I have Facebook? Let's try this out. Let's, let's do this. Here we go. Facebook. Maybe. Did I make a command for it? I don't think I did. Well, at least we know they uh, got a jet. Q4 is scary. My sales have increased times 12, mind you. I had 80 books for ages, then increased 200 books within two months. High fives. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I'm loving it. John Wasser says, I've been too busy with shirts to finish up my prostate health book. Um, okay. Um, it, that, that is important. That is important for sure. For sure. Actually, I, it so happens that I have one of John's books up here on the shelf. Yeah, Kathy, if yours says 100 total items available, you're at each at the 100 tier, I believe, unless you only have 100 uploaded out of so many others. Let me see what it says, because I just take it for granted. Oh, the Facebook thing did work. What other PODs do you suggest trying? Uh, I'll throw my two cents in here. Spreadshirt's got a pretty nice layout. Um, and, oh, believe it or not, there's actually a partnership with uh, Streamlabs OBS. This is what I do my streaming through. Um, Streamlabs OBS actually has a built-in feature to doing merchandise, and they have so many different types. Uh, the profit margin's not the greatest. Uh, Kelly, uh, any recommendations for people to do print on demand and 
You know, and I, I recommend if you're an indie author and you're like, ah, this is not new with me. Uh, it does. It has everything to do with you. I can't tell you how much, like, Derek Murphy actually saw how, what I do with my brand on this channel and, you know, my shirts. And he's like, that's genius. I wish I would have thought of this a long time ago. Like, absolutely. Any author. Um, first off, there's, I think, 50 different PODs, 50 plus. So, Two Blue Eyes, are you already on merch? Do, are you a designer yourself or what is your, you know, your designs like, I should say, because different yeah. websites have different audiences. With that said, and I still want to hear your thoughts, I've been doing decent with Zazzle recently and it's not one that's talked about a lot, but it's been around forever. I When I say yeah. decent, I mean I'm getting, you know, a couple sales a week and that for me... <laughs> That's decent because I started it about two years ago and got my first sale on Zazzle a year later. So um, it's starting to pick up a little bit of momentum. I was talking yesterday with my crowd and, you know, there is potential. I had some Zazzle people in my live yesterday, so I would recommend that. I'm also on Redbubble, which, but it's more artistic. And I'm on TeePublic, but I think I've gotten made $35 on TeePublic in a year and a half. So... Yeah, that's what I got to say about that. Nice. nice. Yep, and yep. Um, Two Blue Eyes, if you do more artistic stuff, go for Redbubble for sure. Redbubble's pretty cool. Yeah, um, I have made a dime there. T Public is more artistic too. Um, merch is just the text-based stuff. So mm. that's why I was curious. As far as Zazzle, there is so much opportunity there for... I haven't figured out yet what the... Um, crowd is like I think it's more like a personalized type thing and more artistic but I've had luck recently with text-based coffee mugs so um, but two blue eyes Jacob topping has a book um, merch and the world of print on demand I'll find a link while Dale's talking Jacob's a good dude Jacob's a um, good dude. I honestly haven't read the book yet. However, it gives you all these different uh, print-on-demand platforms. So mm -hmm. I'll find that. Good. You go ahead and take a look at that. Frog's Rule. Good to see you popping in here. Hey, what is happening? Good to see you. George Steffen says, do you have something special prepared for reaching 10,000 subs? Hmm. Should I plan something? What should we do for 10,000 subs? Subscribers. Because we are now approaching, what, about 8,500 subs? I, I literally stopped paying attention to subscribers after going to this past vid summit and speaking to a lot of the people that are successful within this business. Um, a, a lot of the emphasis is more not so much on subscribers and trying to you know get, try to make, you know up, obtain them. Um, it's more about trying to get more watch time than anything. So that's why you've heard me less say less about hey make sure you hit the subscribe because uh, to me. Um, if you enjoy the content, you're going to come back regardless of hitting that little subscribe button. You're going to come back and consume the content. In fact, believe it or not, folks, I've got actually a plugin. It's called TubeBuddy. You, if you want to get your hands on it, you can go to selfpublishingwithdale.com slash TubeBuddy. Any event on it, it actually shows when people comment whether they're subscribed to you or not. I know some of you aren't subscribed to me. So uh, that, that further proves that you're coming back regardless of subscribe or not. And that, that, that means the world to me. So if you're consuming the content and you're enjoying it, uh, there's probably going to be few exceptions to the rule. Like I've recorded a few videos back before I made this decision to stop asking for a subscribe. And uh, you'll hear me say it every now and then. So it's like pulling a string on me here, like a doll, you know. Welcome to Self-Publishing with Dale. And if you're new here and you want to learn how to publish your brand, books and build your brand, make sure that you subscribe. Uh, I've, I've ditched it and such. So back to the the, the, the re original question. What should we do for a 10,000 subscriber milestone? Everyone meet us here in Ohio. Everyone meets us here in Ohio. <laughs> BYOB. Bring your own book. Um... Stay tuned to hear. Um, I think Social Blade is projecting an early February 10,000 subscriber uh, mark if I stay on track for what I'm you know, doing. Um, I know that for a fact that I won't be spending as much time spreading out. I was doing a lot of video content that was a little bit outside the lines. And unfortunately, I think it was bringing in an audience that the normal message wasn't resonating with. 
and I'll just go ahead and say it is the uh, the Twitch videos. The Twitch videos has gotten me plenty of views and such, but unfortunately, the people that are coming and consuming the content are those that are gamers on Twitch, not indie authors. I'm trying to encourage indie authors to go do this, but unfortunately, I'm attracting in the gamers. And nothing wrong with gamers, but the problem is, is when they go here and get a notification for a live broadcast, they're ready to start talking about gaming, and here we're talking about books, and they're like, what the heck is this? Unsubscribe. And so what ends up happening is this this starts to slowly whittle away at my channel. So you're gonna anticipate that we're gonna be more dialed in on this channel and I'm gonna be a lot more focused. Hence, that you've seen the self-published book unboxing series and got more to come here pretty soon. Got more to come. I was actually just talking with a good friend of the channel, Gary McPherson, and he's gonna be hooking me up with another Ingram Spark book and we're gonna do an unboxing of that and other ones very soon. I got a hardback coming in of Lulu. I've got a spiral bound uh, compliments of our good buddy John Wasser coming in the mail. Speaking of John Wasser, he wants some liquor. Yeah, no liquor in this house. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, you're, you're out of luck. Why did Keith get uh, um, on my channel? 78% of my viewers are non subscribers. Yeah, that, that's the thing. And, and that's, I'm just no longer so worried about subscribers. I used to be so worried. Now I'm just more concerned. And you, you're going to see is, it does make sense for me to come on this channel and just talk about the things I want to talk about. I want to talk about the things that you want to talk about. I want to focus on those things. I want to answer those questions. So hence why, if you've noticed, some of what I've been producing over the last few months has started to dial in a little bit more. It's a little bit lower energy. I'm still a high energy guy, but I've dialed it back a bit more because first of all, A, it takes, it's, it's less stressful for me. B, it requires less energy, and C, I think more people are starting to identify with that a bit more than you know my old scripted green screen videos. Like I, I love the trolling comments that I get sometimes. Like that background is so like bright. Oh, you're so obnoxious. Like yeah, thanks. Yeah, I appreciate it. And I, I typically just shower them with love. Thanks for the comments. I appreciate it. If you check out the latest videos, you'll see it's changed considerably. Hardback meaning printed copy. Oh, okay, gotcha. Um, Y'all come to Georgia. Two blue eyes. We we've been to Georgia before. How long ago was that? Man, oh, it's been a while. Five years, four years. Four or five years. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, our our boy uh, James Ranson's actually down there in Hotlanta. On KDP keywords, can you put lots in each keyword field. Does KDP work like that or should you only put in one long or short keyword for each box? There are two different camps that actually go with this methodology. Uh, I'm going to go towards the Dave Chess and Kindlepreneur camp in that go with a good long tail keyword. Don't try to stuff it in there. Um, in I used to believe that you should just keyword stem as much as you can and, 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 and like literally it, what it, I think it does is it confuses A9. It confuses the Amazon algorithm and rather than getting super focused and telling, okay, here search engine, this is what my book is and this what is my, by telling them what it is, it's telling them what it is not. So if you can go for it. Now there's that other camp and I think Mickelson twins lean towards this direction. Uh, Mecco Asai leans towards this direction. Uh, quite a few other ones and they do the keyword stemming and stuffing. So where it's like whole workout plan, books, book for women, men, children, kids, six to 12. Now that, that was obviously an extreme case, but their, their camp is believing in the broad keyword match. If you go and you review what Amazon specifically asks for keywords, I just described it my way and Dave Chesson and how he kind of says it, and the way that they like it. It's simple. Get a word that makes sense, a keyword that makes sense to describe your book. Now, the order that you put those keywords in is gonna make a huge, huge difference. Just Google up Amazon KDP keywords, and if you see a post from kdp.amazon.com, take a look at it, go through it, read it, get yourself familiar with it. And here's the nice thing, by the way, folks, a lot of people go, oh, I can't afford your course, Dan. Oh, I can't afford this course. Can't. Okay, listen, you can afford KDP Jumpstart because guess what? How much money does it cost, Kelly? Free? Is it free? It's free. Oh, okay. It's free. And they actually walk you through it. 
Believe it or not, there's no like hidden agenda. They're not trying to sell you anything. They're not trying to pull the, you know, the wool over your eyes like, yeah, we're going to show them, you know, if you don't keyword stuff, we're going to push you down to the bot. No, it d doesn't work that way. They're literally telling you exactly what they want uh, and they want you to succeed. And so I just would recommend that you keep your keyword slots. If you can, utilize as much of the 50 characters as you possibly can. But in the same instance, going completely buck wild on every single keyword. Anything you want to add on the keywords area? No, I keep it simple. And I used to, back in the fiction days, do the whole keyword stem mm -hmm. thing. But lately, I've been keeping it simple with merch just to get it done fast. And lately with merch, my simple strategy, I've gotten sales. So I'm like, I know merch is not really the same as KDP, but it's all Amazon. So I think they want it simple for the customers. And I also wonder if the algorithm gets confused if you put too many words in there. So my strategy is just to use the Amazon search bar and see what people are searching for at the time. Mm -hmm. If it's two words, cool. If it's five words, cool. But if it makes sense, that's what I use. Mm -hmm. So there you go. I don't I, overthink it. Yeah, it, it, I think a lot of people spend probably far too much time on keywords. Do you need to spend a little bit of time on it? Absolutely. But if you're spending like two hours on one stinking book, you're doing way too much time. Now, if you're spending time copywriting with particular keywords for like two hours or so, that that's completely understandable. Uh, but you know, if you're spending like five, six hours, like trying to find that magical keyword to get first page placement and get bestsellers list, got news for you, won't Just happen. Just about that gives me a headache. It does, and I've been there, folks. I've been there. I, there's there's reason why I share some of what I do is. I've made mistakes myself, and I'm not going to sit here and mince words with it. Uh, I've made my fair share of mess ups for sure, for sure. And just on the keyword thing, I would also think, you know, if you want someone to buy your title, what would you want them to type in? So, I mean, don't do just one broad keyword, like if you have a fitness book, type in fitness. Mm -hmm. But if you have a fitness book and the workouts are aimed for you know, 40 year olds type in fitness book for 40s or, yep. you know, women over 40 or something like that. So at some point, I think keywords are also common sense. Yeah. And here, here's a fun fact. And this is something that I've learned through Brian G. Johnson TV. He talks a lot about YouTube's algorithm and placing yourself there. Just because a keyword is not popular now doesn't mean it won't be popular later. So as if, for instance, uh, some of you may have tuned in a couple weeks ago to our is, uh, is it worth it publishing on Amazon in 2019? And uh, believe it or not, it's not a sought after keyword. It will be in the next month or so. So it's sometimes it's knowing, you know, something might not be trending right now, a keyword may not, but it could be later on and you could be the early adopter that gets picked up in the wave of searching. So kind of like what Kelly was just saying, and you know, you could be doing knitting doilies for 10 year olds, you know? Uh, it may not be, it might not be an auto-suggested term right now, but who's to say that maybe in another month or two from now that it becomes a trending topic, it becomes something that's highly sought after, and then you broke ground on a keyword that was pretty much no competition and you were the first there. So just something to kind of, uh, you know, think about when you're, you're doing your keyword choice. John Wasser, I appreciate the, uh, the big uh, call to action on subscribing. He actually said, if you subscribe, you get a notice about each new video, which means you won't miss out on something you wanted to see. Even if you have to replay, if not subbed, you have to search for everything. This is true. Those of you that are listening on the podcast platform, wherever you're at, make sure that you're subscribing to your given platform. So for instance, on iTunes or iHeartRadio, if you uh, go ahead and subscribe, you'll get a notification anytime the actual broadcast heads on over there. Short Fortnite clips, thank you very much for the question. That was an excellent question. Scroll up, Walker scroll Publications up. had something. Okay, hang on a second, my mouse disappeared on me here. Um, okay, we're at. All right, Dale, do you have a relationship map that shows the mix and match options of PODs to streaming to equipment as an example? I huh? didn't understand it. <laughs> I. Clearly, based on my expression on my face, I don't. I, I 
have no idea uh, what you what what you mean. Um, if you're still in the chat, if you're still in Walker, I, if you can just maybe expand on that a little bit, I, I don't really understand what the question is. A relationship map that shows the mix and match options of PODs to streaming to equipment, as an example. Yeah, I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm not understanding you. George Stefan. George Stefan says, "Do you use negative keywords for your ads?" Yes, I do. And actually, you ready for this? You ready for this? You ready? Sure. It's the F word, free. Because most times when people are searching for free, they're looking for free content. Um, so uh, he's what he's referring to is the uh, Amazon advertising campaigns that you're able to add a negative keyword into it. And here's the thing is, if I'm trying to sell my book and someone's looking, searching up for free stuff, um, chances are pretty unlikely that they're gonna want to do that. Now, Marco says inside the interview, just let it ride. Like, don't worry about negative keywords. Just let it ride, because you'll find out what words work and what words don't. I would rather just pull out any like broad keyword match with like, say, if I'm doing a workout plan, um, someone's looking up free workout plan. Mm -mm. If I have that F word that's pulled up and a customer's looking, they're looking for a free workout plan. Mine's not free, get lost. Uh, sorry to say that, but you know, the free board are gonna come over and try to take all your free stuff. And in the meantime, they're, they're clicking on your ads. You're having to spend for this free person who's looking for a free program and you've got a pay for program. They don't care. They don't care what your ad copy is. They just want their stuff free. Um, Julie Broad is in the Broad house. Up! She came in as soon as you were talking about Nitty Doilies for 10 year olds. And you're welcome. That's your new hot niche, Julie Broad. You are very welcome. Actually, uh, Dave can probably get that. You, you let him know he needs to start working on his, uh, his Knitting Doilies for 10 year olds uh, book. Uh, Keith Wheeler changed his keyword approach from the stuffing to the way you teach and his sales increased by five times. Five plus five times. Five plus. Um, Jordan Booker is a fan of your channel. What Thank is a good much. website or app I could use to do illustrations for free for kids books? Mm, gosh. Do you have any suggestions on this one? <laughs> nope. It, it's, I, I, I hate to say it, but it's, it, it's going to be really tough. It's going to be really tough. Um, I would say this. Okay. So if you're looking for something free, there are some apps out there that possibly this is my brain thinking of ideas, and I'm just gonna spitball some ideas. Feel free to take this if you will. You got your iPhone or your Android, okay? Go around, snap some pictures, like maybe of yourself or something else like that. You can actually take those to specific apps and turn them into cartoons. Uh, I've seen some ads for those type of things. That's just an idea that I have. You got my brain thinking. When it comes to, uh-oh, Kelly's gonna go write this down. I, I'm flying solo, guys. <laughs> Uh, but there is just an idea that I have right there. Uh, what, do you have the app? No, I have something else. Keep talking. Okay. I, I, one of the times that I'm at a loss for words. So that's just my idea when it comes to... It's, it's funny that you brought this up. I just ordered and received. And this is going to be in a future unboxing, folks. This is my children's books, uh, Grumpy Gus. So what an appropriate time of year. Grumpy Gus meets Santa Claus. Uh, Grumpy Gus beats the blues and Grumpy Gus loses his shoes. And this was uh, stuff that actually I took original uh, designs. Uh, I bought the licensing from them and I turned it, uh, I was able to flip it around. Oddly enough, that's how I got my start on Twitch. Before all of this, about a couple of years ago, I got on and I would just for hours at a time work on these books through GIMP. And what I did was I would take specific portions and I would make and create each one of these designs of each one of like the monkeys and then the backgrounds and uh, but 100% um, each one of these books probably took me about 12 hours to make between writing and formatting and uh, going through and making sure everything looked great uh, I used Keynote in the end to actually do all the formatting inside so really really happy with how these books have turned out and I do plan on and in going into the new year I'm gonna start to give a little more time and energy to Grumpy Gus because this was kind of a fun little project. I'm a big fan of cartoons, by the way, folks, if you didn't know that. Uh, anybody that has watched this channel long enough might have caught, uh, you know, we're just gonna put this right here. Well, while you're doing that, Jordan, if you're still around, I found uh, this auto book sketch 
Autodesk Sketchbook. Mm. It's only on, I think it might only be on iPhone, but it's free. Mm -hmm. um, so look at that. Kelly's so got your back. I completely forgot, and the only reason I deleted it from my phone is I wasn't using it, but it's a good app. Mm -hmm. I just, I was going a different direction with my business at yeah. the time. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, those of you that are fans of this channel, you probably might have not been familiar, but uh, indie author John Celestri, and also animation icon and legend, uh, was interviewed here on this channel. Famous cartoonist, he actually did the He-Man cartoons and Dragon's Lair. Uh, so go back and watch that interview. Very fascinating. Maybe Dave can use it in his next Park Bench parenting episode. <laughs> you guys need to go check out uh, check out uh, Giggle and Grin for sure. That would be awesome. Gotcha. I have some pictures on my phone. I'm Android. We'll use what I have. You both rock. Hey, thank you. Hey, we've always got great ideas. Uh, I'm not sure if in practice. This is the problem, is there's a lot of ideas being bounced around this house, but I would say we probably use 1% of those ideas. Katrina says, hi guys, not getting a great signal, but hoping you're having fun. I'll catch the replay. Hello on the replay, Katrina, it's great to see you. Jordan, I thought it was only on iPhone, but I just found it on Google Play. So Ooh, there uh, we go. check it out. Nice, nice. Um, LOL, I'm using that right now. I see sketchbook. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I thought it was only on iPhone, so my it's on mistake. Android too. Cool. Nice, nice. Um, is there anything else? Spell the name of the cartoon app. Was this a cartoon app? I it's don't on and oh, it's a popular thing. A couple people have it. Nice. I don't know if John is wanting this spelled. You want to type that in? Autodesk Sketchbook. Uh, here, hang on a second. I'll get that. And by the way, we don't have an affiliate for that. Um, and you would think with all of, both of us are wearing Thinkific jackets and I've got a Thinkific journal setting over here. Um, Thinkific's not like sponsoring us today, folks. We just happen to wear the same thing at the same time. Autodesk sketchbook. There you go. Yeah, we're that's not an affiliated thing. So if you get it, do so at your own risk. It's of no benefit to us either way. There's uh, so many ways you can do things. I find that for, you know, when it comes to kids, kids uh, illustrations and such, use your imagination. Actually, I think it was BJ Novak, uh, actor, that actually put out a book that literally was no pictures at all. It's, it's an awesome book, by the way, if you ever get the opportunity. It's, it's white with black print, large lettering and such, and it's funny. It, it's a creative way of doing a children's book without having a bunch of illustrations. And bear in mind, there are actually a lot of children's books out there that are not picture heavy. They actually have just the reading element. Um, that wasn't it. You said something like tippy, tippy or... Tippy or something that you use. Mm, I, did you say that? I don't remember. I'm sorry, John. No. Yeah, but unfortunately, I've already lost it. Hi, guys. Does D2D &D show reviews from the various platforms? Not unless you no. click on it. No, not unless you actually visit uh, the individual aggregation uh, to each one of the sites. Bye, Julie. Thank yeah. you for stopping by. Thank you very much for stopping by. And then Jana said he would, earlier, he said he'd be ecstatic if he could sell three or four t-shirts a day. Ah, see, I didn't even say today's word of the day. If you've made it this far in the broadcast, folks, today's word is ecstatic. Prove you made it this far and drop the word in the comments and uh, get out of here. Get. Knitting Mommy plays around with making cartoons with Daz Studio. Mm. Love cartoons and comics. Oh, I've never heard of that one. Interesting. I like that. Knitting Mommy. Knitting to. Mommy's probably thinking I'm like like mocking her like right now when I said the knitting doilies. It, it was just really random. I'm sorry, Knitting I Mommy. I took a picture of that for later. Category question. Is there a way to add non-listed categories for KDP paperbacks? The one I would like to publish is not listed, but the but other books on Amazon are Amazon are in it. You got to email them. Got to email them. Actually, I've got an entire playlist based on that. And uh, it, that reminds me, I need to probably jot down some notes about some commands I can probably put in here. But uh, it's going to work if you use the same directions I have it for create space for your print books. It'll work on the KDP print and it'll work for KDP in general. Uh, find the entire browse path of a particular book and you've got to kind of copy it, the entire thing. and send it over into contact us through your dashboard 
and let them know, hey, I need ASIN, whatever your book ASIN is, or the ISBN, added to this browse path. You can have upwards of 10 categories listed on a particular book, but you will only ever see up to three on your product details, and it'll be the top three that your book is doing best in. If you see in your Kindle ebook or in your paperback book that there's like a, like for instance, you'll see like print books being listed under your Kindle. That's just an automated thing that Amazon does as kind of a courtesy for your book and they do it based on your keywords and they also bots and everything else. I would recommend that you wipe that out of there. Get it, like let them know, be like, hey, there's a print books category. Could you remove this and replace this? So you need to kind of express to them which categories you wanna keep and which ones you wanna add. So if you can kind of do a little bit of due diligence, it is in the playlist, by the way. It does the full play-by-play, -play, shows you exactly how to find those categories and how to add those. But yes, yes, and keep in mind, there is, last I heard, over 20,000 different browse paths on Amazon in the, the bookstore. So there's a lot to choose from and they're constantly putting out new ones, taking out old ones. They're testing out different categories and trying out other ones. I just recommend this, and if any of you have watched me long enough, I, I can't express this to you enough. Don't put your book into a category it's not appropriate, okay? So if you're putting out an erotica book, please don't be that jerk that puts your erotica book over into a children's book because for some reason it's a, it's a, a very low competition. That's a jerk move, and I, I can assure you the day is gonna come that that loophole is gonna get sealed up. So categorize your books accordingly to what your book is about. So, Eric Rosner, what's shaking, man? Good to see you. Aaron Chase, what is the most authors you can use for a bundle as I have four unique author names as I am able to use all four on the cover? I think you can add. Buck wild, man. You, you like, that's literally, that's actually called a compilation, really. <laughs> so uh, I, go for it. I, I think you can add all four. I think I have one with all four. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah I, I've never really tested the limits of how many contributors you can put on an in individual one, but I've seen numerous uh, publications that have been put out with compilations of indie authors and upwards of like six or more authors at a time that are on the actual metadata. So uh, good question though. But yeah, that's a compilation. Good call. Kathy Mankin, is there any books with no words like pictures tell the stories? Yes. Picture books. Yes. Yes. And actually, I have, I have a good handful of picture books that do reasonably well, actually. Uh, I actually had tested out an idea a couple of years ago, and actually, not even a couple, it was over a year ago, and it didn't pull me a lot of money, but uh, for about a couple hours' work, I ended up having about a few hundred bucks pocketed from that, and like it was very little work. So, um, picture books do really, really well. They can be a little bit of a pain, and especially if you plan on doing them in print form. That's where you're going to make the most of your money at uh, with the print books or the uh, with uh, picture books is through print books because you can actually charge a little bit more and possibly mark it as a coffee table book or a children's book. So something to think about. And some someone you can actually follow is Jay Bruce Jay Bruce Jones. Bruce Jones actually used to be here on YouTube. He's now over in Vimeo. If you need to get connected with him, he is actually inside the Facebook group for self-publishing books, and I'm sure he'd be happy to cover any kind of questions, concerns, and comments. I'd love to get him over on the Facebook group and talk one of these times. Are you using AMS for books? Uh, it's yes and no. <laughs> I'm being lazy about it. I'm sorry, folks. I I should be using Amazon advertising for my books, but I I went through Marco's course, and one of the things he says is this is not a set and forget type of business, and unfortunately, I just don't have discretionary time or bandwidth to sit down and run the ads. So if you go in and you look at some of my books and you're like, oh my gosh, those ranks are terrible. I know, I know, my fitness books are dying a slow death. Uh, I anticipate I'll probably be reviving them come January. So in any event, yes, uh, Amazon advertising, great avenue. Uh, I've had some people ask me, do I use it on no content books? No, I don't bother with that. I could, literally, it's not worth my time. I would rather run ads on my nonfiction or fiction books, but nothing like the no content books. It's just, I'm good. You are welcome, Aaron, for keeping it real. I don't know any other way. <laughs> yeah, keep in it real. George Stephan said, I've heard that it's not a good idea to mention famous people in your books without their permission because you might get sued but why oh, are YouTube videos treated differently? George, I tell you, that's that's just one of those gray areas. Some people call it, um, 
what's the word fair I'm looking? Use. Fair use. They call it fair use, and you can do it in fair use within in books. People can still be sued. You like literally, I could I could be like, I just watched George's videos the other day and gave me a hangout. I'm gonna sue him, you know? Or oh, George gave me a shout out in his thing. I, I they, they emotionally scarred me. Uh, so people can sue for just about anything. I think sometimes people get real tight butthole on it. They're like, oh my gosh, if I mention Michael Jackson's name, his estate's going to come after me because I said it in the book. I wouldn't worry. If you're not saying anything that's untrue and disparaging and completely slanderous, I think you probably should be good. So as a, for instance, it could be like, you know, you're writing a fiction book. It'd be like... Dale's favorite singer when he was a kid was Michael Jackson, by the way, that's true. Um, you know, uh, that's that's not gonna, Michael Jackson's estate's not gonna come after, you know. Um, Kelly's least favorite, you know, celebrity is Kim Kardashian. You know, I, I don't know if that's true, is it? No. Okay, all right. Uh, so, I mean, you know, there's, there's that. I mean, so if it's not anything that's libel or slander, I think you're probably gonna be good. Um, trying to put together fan fiction that's when you're starting to dance that line of fair use so fair use is just that area of gray there's been some people who have been taken to court and have lost uh so but it's also amazon versus youtube i mean amazon i think in my opinion has more of a tight butthole because oh, like yeah. um, they're much more protective than youtube is on i had a merch shirt with um a mathematical equation done by albert einstein and they rejected it because I used Einstein as a keyword and they wanted me to get permission from Einstein to use that as a keyword. So, I mean, I was just like, it wasn't a shirt that was selling well at all. It had a couple sales, but just an example, they're more tight butthole than YouTube's. Yeah, it's it, it, it's it's a little bit unusual. This is a no Yong zone. Yeah, Yong doesn't show up. Uh, even if he did, that's what I'd be doing. I'll take that. Now, <laughs> yeah. Uh, no Walker Publications asked, are either you on Vim Vimeo? Vimeo? Um, no, no, I've uh, watched some tutorials on Vimeo tonight. <laughs> and after that experience, yeah. no, 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 no. I had a they poor can, experience with them too. They with, can uh, go outside and never come back. Yeah. So She's trying to be family friendly here, folks. I need to get a beep button, so that way anytime you want to say something, I'll just go ahead and bleep it out. Uh, you know, I, I tell you, uh, uh, I used Vimeo previously, and I just was underwhelmed. Uh, Jason Brock and I actually had done a course back in the day together, and we hosted it through Vimeo, and it just, ugh, ugh. And you got to pay for a certain amount of, uh, like, a video that you can Oh, he up. has to pay for that? Yeah, And it acts like crap? For it. Yes. Oh. Yeah, for sure. Mm -mm. Guys, the see she, she whiz. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Mike Tyson got busted out. He's pointing and laughing at Kelly already. Did someone just say butthole coffee? I don't know. By the way, Walter Weyburn, we're waiting on that branding deal right there. So as soon as you get that coffee thing going on, you let us know. We'll work out like a brand deal here. Um, Thanks, guys. Yes. Don Elborn, can you use a historical figure as your pen name if a quote from them is on the cover? For example, I have not yet begun to fight John Paul Jones, or is that a crazy idea? I wouldn't do it. Uh, unfortunately, I just, from a legal standpoint, I can't give you good, solid advice. I would just, I would err on the side of caution and not fool with it. When it comes to publishing on Amazon, for me at least, when it comes to both KDP and merch, if I question something in my head, I usually don't do it. John Wasser, John Wasser, you remember who came before the Mickelson twins, all right? So you know what you did? You know what you did? They're being influenced by us. Yes, we influence them. So if yeah. anything, you're going to probably, you guys are going to start to see less curse words the more they spend time around us. <laughs> less, like they were drinking wine on their, their video the other day. I'm like, who does that? Like, like literally, like boozing it up. I'm like, you guys are so crazy. Yo, LOL, you got it, brother. Hey, awesome, good, good. We need to be the very first ones there. So that's true. The Constitution does not protect slander and libel. Moreover, if you lose your lawsuit, the respondent is allowed to counter sue. Ooh. I'm a bit surprised that they told you to get permission from Einstein. I'm like, duh, yeah. All right, we're, for some reason, Einstein's not returning our calls. 
I think with merch being a new platform, they've been, you know, when we went to the conference in yeah. September, October, whatever that was, they, someone from merch was talking and he did say they've been sued a few times. So I think they're being extra cautious. Because they like, don't want to be taken into court. Yeah, know? like, who knows? Who wants to be taken know, into court? Even I'm if you are Amazon. Right, you know, I would have fought it if it was a shirt that was selling daily, but it was selling maybe once every three months. So I was like, yeah. Yeah, good stuff. All righty. I'm a bit surprised. Yes, indeed, for sure, Kathy. If you can get, uh, we'll give you a shiny nickel and a banana sticker if you can get a hold of Einstein's uh, estate and see if we can get that all ironed out. Thank you very much. All righty. Folks, this has been a Thursday night broadcast as per usual. 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Greenwich Mean Time, minus 5. It says every, but what about next week? Yes, and I was getting right up to that point. Oh, well, it says every. I know this is misleading, folks. It's misleading. So next week, we actually have a holiday community party that we are unable to make it to our live broadcast next week. So you're going to skip the 13th. But meet us the week after next, and I want to hear from each and every one of you what do you think the KDP Select Global Fund will be, and we'll announce it the week after next. So that's going to end up being, let's see here. It'll uh, already be announced the 20th. on the 20th, mm -hmm. so people will know. So we'll be here on the 20th, and we got to know now. That's why I'm saying. <sighs> Calm yourself. Like, literally, like you're getting like more worked up than I normally do. You're on it. On it, yes. Get a hold of them for sure. So, folks... I always appreciate you tuning in every single week. And as per usual, we want you to take a look at the next videos that are coming here. If you're watching this live right now, there's nothing there. You're probably like, oh, wow, I don't have any videos to click, Dale. That's okay. Just wait until we're done and you can get connected to the next one. But those of you watching the replay, hit the next video. Join us on over there. In the meantime, between times, see ya in a couple